What is going on, Rush Hour Sports Network? It is yours truly, Jay Smooth, here uh, to host the NFL show like I do every week. And joining me as always uh, is co-host B-Money. What's going on, sir? What's up, fam? Back in the crib. Yeah, man, great to have you back. Great to have you back. We are here to cover yet another week in the NFL. This week was weird, though, because uh, technically it didn't end until yesterday. Usually all the games are done by Monday, but uh, yesterday was the final pair of games in the week in a very weird week, shall we say. But going through all the scores, starting on Thursday night back on the 16th, uh, Kansas City defeated the Chargers 34-28. to That one went to overtime. Very close divisional battle, actually, between these two teams. One of the better Thursday night games, uh, actually, of the entire season. And once again, man, Chargers putting up a good effort, but they came up short, and it's pretty clear that Kansas City still runs that division. I, I'd say that's probably the lesson of the night there. Yeah, I mean, Kansas City's the they're the hottest team in the NFL to me. Like, they're, they're looking scary. Yeah, man, it's it's that time of the year where they start to buckle down, they start winning games that actually matter and really they start to play like a unit and it's going to spell it's it's already spelling trouble for all the other teams. Yeah. And then on Saturday night we had uh we were supposed to have supposed to have two games, but we ended up having one game Saturday and that was the the Colts and the Patriots. Colts ended up winning 27 to 17 in a bit of a surprise. Uh, I got to say, the, the Patriots did not look good in this one. They they came out a little bit flat, probably probably because, uh, you know, the whole Saturday schedule and whatnot, but came out flat. The Colts ended up looking really good in this game. Certainly one of their better games of the season, one of their more important victories, and if anything, the Colts are looking like they're, gonna, they're, they're starting to get a little bit hot this time of year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Colts are another team that I'm paying close attention to. I think it's really going to be interesting how, how this, um, how that division is going to turn out. I mean, I think the Colts are a game behind the Titans, but I feel like the Colts are the stronger team right now. Yeah, they certainly are the stronger team at the moment. They they have, I'd say, like, it's, as far as both sides of the ball, they're certainly more in key with everything, and they're certainly putting together a lot more a lot more impressive drives uh, than their opponents, and with with the it's weird with the uh, with the Patriots this time around, it just looked like they were flat considering how good they've been looking up until now. But uh, this is a big win for the Colts, and it's certainly going to have a lot of weight for them uh, in terms of playoff positioning and whatnot. Yeah. And then on Sunday, uh, of course, Dallas. I mean, the, the Cowboys, of course, beat up on the Giants. 21-6, no real surprise there, just the Cowboys getting it done and the Giants rolling over before they clean house and start fresh next season. And then, of course, oh, goodness, this is the, the, the ultimate tank bowl, I guess you'd call it. Um, Houston defeats Jacksonville 30-16. I mean, it's pretty much safe to say Jacksonville is going to be picking Maybe picking number, oh, actually, no. I think they'll be picking at least number two. Uh, we'll get to that whole draft position thing in a minute, though. But, yeah, the, the Texans just put a beat down on the Jaguars. First game without Urban Meyer, who, by the way, um, I believe, did, did he get fired after we recorded? Yeah. Yeah, this is actually our first time talking about it since it happened. And he, he got fired, man, straight up. Yes, Urban Meyer is the coach no more for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And it was going to happen eventually, you know. I know, right? And you know what? It's crazy because um, I remember at the beginning of this season, Urban Meyer was touted as one of those coaches who maybe could be one of those college coaches to come over and have that success at the next level. But I got to be honest with you, man. The signs were there. And they were there before he even got there. You know, when you see how he left uh, Florida, how he left Ohio State, uh, not to mention the way he coached. The, 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 the way he coached there is not how you coach in the NFL. Like, it reminds me a lot of, like, Nick Saban when he tried to do it. It reminds me of Chip Kelly when he tried to do it. 
uh, you just can't coach NFL players the way you coach college players, and you can't treat them like that either. And he lost that locker room during preseason. When you lose your locker lo- lo- uh, the locker room during preseason, you're doomed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, it, and honestly, like the the Khan family didn't want to didn't want to fire him. They wanted to hold on to him even when they came out and made that statement that they wanted to do it. But ultimately, the heat was just too much, man. And then when that kicker came out about Urban Meyer kicking him in his injured leg during warmups and like a preseason game, it's that like, was wild. yeah, it's like you just right. It's like oh, you just goodness. you just cannot do that. Like how how does a fight not break out right there? Is my question, but. My my uh, wasn't it something where Marvin Jones like him and, yes. the coach and Urban Meyer came to blows or almost came to blows? They did, and I believe they benched. Uh, they benched somebody on the team, and Marvin Jones was pissed off about it. And he's usually a guy that doesn't get angry. So, like the like Urban Meyer really went like above and beyond to do that. Not to mention he called all of his assistant coaches losers, which is like, what are you doing? <laughs> he's calling his own staff losers. Yeah. It's like what what are you doing, Urban? And mind you, this is in addition to the thing where he ditched his team after that loss in Cincinnati. I think it was Cincinnati or Cleveland, uh, where he went to the bar, uh, his own bar, and he put on his Ohio State gear just so he can uh mix in with some of the college girls. It's like what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? He was not about it. And I feel like you called it early too. Yeah, man. It, it and and the only reason why I kind of felt this happening is because the stuff he did at Ohio State was sleazy, and the stuff he did at Florida was sleazy. Like against Maryland, when he faked having a heart attack, and it actually was revealed that he faked having a heart attack, and, and until he had a real one, of course, later on. But it's like this guy's just got too many red flags. Not to mention. You do realize he's the same guy that covered up for Aaron Hernandez when he played in Florida, right? Oof. Yeah, he had, to, remember, he had Tim Tebow and Aaron Hernandez on that Florida team when they won the national title. That man knew everything Aaron Hernandez did in college and said nothing about it. So, again, right. yeah, that's what I mean, man. When you... Right. When you piece together Urban's track record from Florida to Ohio State to now, it's just too many, too many red flags with the guy. And his behavior, his arrogant behavior carried over to the pros. And yeah, it's just a lesson of you got to be careful of what college coach you get. And And by the way, here's some good news, though, for the Jaguars. One of the early candidates for that coaching job that I think makes all sense in the world is Byron Leftwich. Yeah. They want him. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. It does. They want him from the Bucks. He's a big candidate. Of course, I want to see somebody like Eric Bieniemy finally get a head coaching job. But if the Jaguars are going to go in the direction of a rebuild, go with somebody that's familiar with the franchise, plus some plus a former quarterback that can help develop Trevor Lawrence because he's clearly the star of that team if when used properly. So yeah. the Jaguars have a good future, but yeah, man, <laughs> I'll tell you what, what what's crazy about Urban Meyer is he's going to find his way back in college. That's the thing about him. Like his, his, he, he's going to go down in the category of coaches that will be great in college, but, but in the pros, they'll be terrible. That's why Nick Saban will never leave Alabama, you know? And he never should, honestly. Absolutely. He should he stay in, like a king over there. Oh, no doubt about it, bro. He he's going to finish his career there. Chip Kelly, after Chip Kelly left the Eagles, he went to UCLA. UCLA is now in a big bowl game this year, an important bowl game, so he's going to stay put for a while. Urban Meyer is going to find his way back probably in a big program because a lot of big programs are letting their uh, coaches go recently. But um, he's going to find his way back in a big program and probably stay in the college ranks. But, yeah, man, that that co- that pro experiment was such a failure. I don't think any team will touch him. Yeah, I'd be surprised. Absolutely, man. I would be too. But, yep, rest in peace to Herb Meyer's career. He lasted, what, 16 games? <laughs> 15 games, yeah. 15. Oh, man. And he only won, what, three of them? Like two, three of them? 
Jeez, that's ugly. I'll tell you what, though. He did beat the Buffalo Bills. I got to give him that. <laughs> They won two games. Exactly oh, two games. That's right. They won the London game and then they upset the Bills. <laughs> and that's it. So so Urban Meyer is probably a European superstar over there since he got one win <laughs> over in London. Oh boy. That, that that'll be a fun recruiting trip when he goes back to London. But anyways. You oh, you want to talk about a crazy game, man. <clears throat> the Steelers. Take one over the Titans, nineteen to thirteen, and I tell you what, man, the, the the Steelers are looking like a shaky team. I actually bet on them to win this game, and they did and covered. But man, I was sweating for the majority of that one. And what pissed me off about this is, if you want any more, if if anyone needs any more proof that Big Ben needs to retire, that Roethlisberger needs to go. This is the perfect fucking game for it because, my God, <laughs> Big Ben did not have a good showing in this one. He didn't, but somehow, some way, they won this game. And yeah. I think the wild part about it, too, is really, <laughs> like, the Steelers won this game, but the Titans really did collapse. I think there was a point in the third quarter where the Titans th- turned the ball over, I think, three possessions in a row. They did. like that. They did, man. And they basically... Turn the score from like thirteen nothing, thirteen three to all of a sudden the Steelers have the lead. <laughs> right. So, oh man! Depressing loss for the for the Titans. Absolutely depressing loss for the Titans, indeed, man, indeed. Sucks for them too because they had a lot of high hopes, but once uh, Derrick Henry went down, so did their season. And yeah. then, and then, yeah, I mean, and okay. right now they're just trying to hang on for dear life because I think. Derrick Henry is supposed to be back for the last game or two of the season, so I think they just need to get through with one or two more games to hang on one or for one or two more weeks. Yeah. And King Henry might be back, but the other question is: is what condition will Derrick Henry be? Exactly. Will he be ready to take on the load and to carry them into the playoffs, or or not? So right, because we'll see. Yeah, because if they rush him back into there, giving him the full load, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be pretty for him. Uh, let's see the next game. Miami ends up winning by seven over the Jets. Uh, I mean, hey, Miami is Miami. They're doing okay, and of course the Jets, they're just they're just tanking for the next year. None too important there. I mean, with that being said, though, in this game, the Jets gave him a scare. The Jets actually were leading, I think, most of this game. Yeah, they the were. The Dolphins had to come back and win in the, in the end. So, was, yeah, I remember when, like the Dolphins started this game. They came out kind of flat, but um, they were able to pull it together in the end. Absolutely. And it, in the shocker, I'd say, of the Sunday, the Lions beat up on the Cardinals, who just came out completely just damaged. 30-12 to 12 here. Did not expect this at all. I figured Detroit won their first game and only game of the year when they beat uh, the Vikings. But no, they put a beat down on the Cardinals. I mean, who who the hell saw this coming? This is clearly one of those games where the Cardinals have to reassess everything and kind of, I guess, kind of put into perspective how they want to treat the rest of the season here. Yeah, absolutely upset of the week. Definitely. I didn't see this one coming at all. And you know what? The Cardinals are definitely going to have to come up with some sort of plan to get into the playoffs and just try to rest their starters. Because, man, I don't know what it is, but Kyler Murray did not look great. He, he did not look The other look... thing is, too, is that we talk about an upset of the week. Looking at the scores, would this be skull drag of the week, too? Uh, based... It's the largest margin of victory. Technically, it is. Well, yeah, that's true because it is larger than Buffalo and Carolina. And, of course, it's larger than the 49ers and Atlanta. So I think, yeah, I think this does qualify a skull drag of the week. It is a larger margin than Houston and Jacksonville as well. So, yeah, I think this does qualify. And not only, yeah. So, yeah, it's upset of the week and it's skull drag of the week. And, honestly, who the hell saw this coming other than the... Crazy degenerate gamblers that thought Detroit would win this shit, even though clearly they wouldn't. Nobody really thought they would. 
It just, it just makes no sense, man. It's one of those surprise wins that shouldn't have happened, but here we are. My goodness. I will say, though, Detroit's got a lot of fight in them for a team that pretty much should be bottoming out the rest of the year. It doesn't make any sense, but hey, I guess that's Dan Campbell, right? He's going to bite kneecaps while he's at rock bottom. It's yeah, good. I mean, the only thing is now for Detroit, if they're not careful, they're going to lose the first overall pick. Yeah, that's the thing they need to worry about. Somebody needs to remind Dan Campbell that they need that pick. <laughs> they right. need they need it. I hope like now they have two wins, but you know, the Jaguars only got two wins too, and now they don't have a coach, so Exactly. So fucking the Ford family better tell his ass to bottom out the rest of the year. Exactly. Just just lay down and take the losses. Let's see, we have Buffalo beating up on Carolina 31-14. to We can pretty much put Carolina in the dirt. We could have put them in the dirt weeks ago, but a game like this definitely puts them there. Buffalo gets a much-needed uh, kick-in-the-face win that they needed for their season. Hopefully they could put together some more, but yeah. A uh, big win for the Bills. Uh, Cincinnati, very close margin of victory win over the Broncos here 15 to 10 and I gotta say man I don't know what it is I think some teams maybe have figured Cincinnati out or maybe Cincinnati slowing down themselves but uh even when they're winning man I remember when they were putting up 41 points on other teams earlier in this earlier in the season and now they're they're just limping by to get a victory they're limping to the finish line yeah and the added big news about this game was Teddy Bridgewater was hospitalized i believe it was in the second quarter yeah he got knocked the hell out i didn't see i didn't see it but i read about it apparently he got hit really hard on the ground and he was sent off yes so hopefully he's fine by the way teddy has had i think an injury like that before so i hope that's not a career ender i remember in minnesota that motherfucker was taking all sorts of hits for the squad yeah good on him though he's tough as hell uh, 49ers beat up on the Falcons, 31-13. I mean, hey, don't blink now, man. The 49ers, and, and you and I talked about it before. They're looking more and more scary each week. And, like, and hey, you said it yourself. They're going to be must-watch. And actually, it's funny, must-watch. They are the Thursday night game this coming week, playing tomorrow. So, boy, the, the spotlight is shining bright on them right now. Certainly can't wait to see what the 49ers are going to do. That There's certainly a team I think can sneak into the playoffs as a wild card. Uh, they're certainly putting up a much better fight than everybody else in that division. Uh, in a very close game, game of the week for America's game of the week, uh, Green Bay beat Baltimore 31-30. The Ravens lose despite a career heroic effort from Tyler Huntley. Uh, and despite hanging in with Aaron Rodgers and putting up one hell of an effort. Uh, the Ravens, yet again, go for two and decide to go for the win, but ultimately fall short. And it's heartbreaking because it's happened more than once, and the Ravens are now 2-8 and eight on two-point conversions this season, which is not very good. <laughs> not very good at all. Yeah, and then, of course, you know, the added situation. This is now three weeks in a row that the Ravens have lost close games. Of course, you mentioned losing to the Steelers a couple weeks ago and this one by two-point conversions. And then last week, they lose to Cleveland um, um, on their last possession, having a chance to go down and win it and coming up short on the final drive. Um, So three losses in a row for Baltimore now actually kicks them out of the playoffs if the season ends today. Um, Nevertheless, though, big kudos to Tyler Huntley putting on a truly memorable performance. It was almost as if, you know, you didn't need Lamar Jackson out there that he put up what you would probably expect Lamar to do. Um, But again, it still ends up as as a loss for the Ravens and the Packers get a win, a huge win for them too, as, as they become the first team to clinch their division this season. This Absolutely. This is a huge win for the Packers. And yeah, the Ravens are now going to, uh, this is funny. The Ravens are certainly going to find their way in, but yeah, 
if playoffs started today, they would find themselves on the couch, and that sucks. So they're gonna have to find. They're they're now in a situation where pretty much if they win out, they control everything. So the ball is now in their hands to get some wins and not choke <laughs> when it matters the most. And in our nightcap for Sunday, the Buccaneers get shut out by a New Orleans team that didn't have Sean Payton and had, I'd say, Tim Tebow 2.0 throwing the ball out there. Uh, 9 nothing. <laughs> My goodness, Taysom Hill is awful. I don't know why they paid him all that money. I don't know why they thought he'd be a quarterback. Uh, if they had this much of a dilemma then they should have just made the man a running back because he can run better than he throws. That is for damn sure. The man is Tim Tebow out there. And somehow Tim Tebow 2.0 beat Tom Brady, and Tom didn't put up a single point. And by the way, uh, the Buccaneers get A.B. back, which they do need despite, because they lost Chris Godwin for the year due to a torn ACL. And they also signed Le'Veon Bell, who... Uh, is fresh from getting cut from the Ravens and fresh from calling out Jake Paul to a boxing match after Jake Paul knocked out a UFC champion. Still can't believe that happened. What the hell? Yeah, um, yeah that uh, very weird 24 hours for Le'Veon Bell. The man was going to box, and now he's going to uh, run for the Buccaneers for the rest of the year. Yeah, and it, wor- and it, it all makes sense. I mean, so you talked about the Bucks in this game. Part of the reason why the Bucks didn't put up any points is because they lost Chris Godwin in this game for the season. Um, they lost Fournette, at too. At one point in the second half, Mike Evans went down, and he did not return. Yes. Um, and Leonard Fournette went down, and he also did not return. So yes. And Leon Bell is going to replace Fournette moving forward. And of course, they, they're going to get Antonio Brown back from injury. There are some questions whether or not they were going to cut him based on the circumstances of the suspension. But now they need him, so I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, Bruce um, Arians had to walk back on his own word because yeah. <laughs> they need him. Uh, yeah, and it's, just, it's sad because Arians has to walk back his own words of saying, oh, A.B., one more strike and you're out. But he's only walking back on it because he doesn't have a choice. Exactly. His hands are tied. Um, but, yeah, the Bucks couldn't put up any points in this game, and, and it was quite the defensive battle, you know, and the Saints – defense really was the ones that won out as they were able to shut down Brady and company. Um, and then the other thing, I think, the reason why the Le'Veon Bell move is huge, you think you also talk about the Buccaneers. They lost Giovanni Bernard earlier this year, too, so the only running back they really had on their roster left without Fournette and without Bernard was, was Ronald Jones, who took most of the load in the fourth quarter, but they also had another running back whose name I can't remember because he played like shit (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's why he's not memorable yeah he had in that game on Monday or excuse me on Sunday night he he was fumbling the ball dropping passes out of the backfield not hitting the holes he was actually dog shit so he can't be that much worse than what they're gonna get from Lady on Bell so it is what it is exactly pretty much is what it is for them then of course on Monday night we had two games. We had a terrible uh, Raiders Cleveland uh, Browns game that ended up in a game-winning field goal for the Raiders. They win sixteen to fourteen. They beat an understaffed Cleveland Browns, and really that was much needed in many ways for the Ravens, but and also for the uh, for the Raiders as well. Even though the season's over anyway. Uh, and then speaking of much needed. The Vikings got themselves a win over the Chicago Bears, seventeen to nine. Good performance all around from the Vikings, and of course from the Bears, they are as bad as expected. Bad enough to oh, give so the. Depressing to watch from the Bears. Oh my goodness. I mean, listen, the kicker should have been cut that day when I wanted him cut. Nagy should have been fired at Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? That whole team should have been blown up. The only good player on there is Fields, and he's being wasted because he has a shit coach and a shit team to work with, and it's it's terrible to watch. And then on Monday night, uh, I'm sorry, Tuesday night, in a very weird Tuesday night game, the uh, Rams beat the Seahawks in a game that was only available to be seen on the West Coast, 20-10. to 10. 
uh, the Rams, Cooper Cup, uh, pretty much was the star of this and stole the whole damn show. He essentially carried them right to victory. Uh, and then the Washington football team uh, essentially get eaten alive by the Philly Birds, 27-17. to uh, they, the, the Washington team was racked with so many COVID, uh, so many COVID players on the list that they ended up dragging a Patriots practice squad quarterback off the couch. And he nearly beat the Eagles in the first half, but in the second half, the Eagles woke up and said, wait a minute, we're not supposed to lose to this bum. Uh, and they started playing football, and they ended up winning by 10, so good for the Eagles. But that, that whole division is garbage, though. The the, the Cowboys are going to run away with that, most likely. For sure, for sure. I think the biggest thing, the news that does come out of that game is that the Eagles, with that win, put themselves in the conversation for the final wild card spot. Yes, they do. And honestly, they should take it because Washington sucks. I mean, they had that good little streak there, but uh, reality is set in for them. And uh, at this point, I don't know if that team is going to be able to hold up, even if they do go to the playoffs. Yeah. No doubt. And then we go over now to week number 16. And we actually have two weeks left. Can you believe it? Normally, it's actually three. Normally, it's like, you know, week 17 is the big one. But now we have week 18 as the big one. So we have another week. Crazy stuff. And now we start on December 23rd. Uh, on actually tomorrow night, uh, the 49ers and the Titans. Who do you have in this one? I personally am going for San Francisco. I'm going to ride the hot hand here and I'm going to bet the hot hand. Yeah, you said San Francisco? Yep, 49ers and the Titans are the game tomorrow night. Yeah, I am picking the Niners as well. Nice. Yeah, I mean, the, the Titans are, are, again, just trying to survive, dragging their feet about King Henry. I think the Niners are, are starting to, to figure figure their team out. And they have a chance, I think, if they win this game, to, to really solidify themselves into the wild card spot for the playoffs. So, I think it's a huge game for the Niners to win. I agree. It's going to be a big one for the Niners, no doubt about that. Then, of course, Saturday, we have on the 25th, on Christmas Day, uh, the Browns will be playing the Green Bay Packers at 4.30 Christmas Day. I believe the Browns will have Baker Mayfield back, uh, along with many others they were losing, including their coach Kevin Stefanski. But they're going to Green Bay, and they're going to Glambeau Field to play Aaron Rodgers on Christmas. Give me the Packers all day, every day. Who you got? Yeah, they may get everybody back, but it won't be enough to beat the Packers. The Packers are still, they keep finding ways, ways to win, so I'm picking the Packers. Good stuff. Uh, let's see, 8-15, we have the Colts, and we have the Cardinals, uh, of course, on Christmas night. This is going to be a very good game. The Cardinals just got humiliated by the Lions, and the Colts fresh off that big win over the Patriots. You know what? Uh, I think the Cardinals are gonna come in pissed off. I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna push around Indy a little bit at home. What do you think? I think this game has the potential to be the game of the week. I think the so. Game that everyone should be watching, and it's very fitting that it's on Christmas night for all of us to see. I agree, man. This this is like this is like you said. Not only is it the best game of the week, the fact that we get a Christmas night is like an extra Christmas present for our football fans. Even though I'm going to pick them, I honestly, I, I want to go with the Colts, though, because they're kind of the hot hand right now, but yeah, I feel like the... Yeah, I was thinking, I'm going to pick the Colts. To yeah, I want, to, I want to go for the Colts, because um, the Cardinals, even though, you know, even though the Cardinals obviously came off that terrible loss to the Lions, they're probably going to come in pissed off and maybe get a redemption win, but at the same time, the Colts are like the hot hand right now, so... There seem it yeah. seems like they're knocking off teams that they shouldn't knock off. But I guess for, I guess you know I'll I'll go ahead and pick the Cardinals at home though. I'll pick them at home, and you can pick the Colts. All right, yeah, All I'm right. sticking with the Colts. No doubt. So we'll we'll do that. And then our first game Sunday, uh, Giants and Eagles. This is a NFC East matchup. This is in Philly. 
Uh, I'm going to take the Eagles at home. The Giants don't really have anything to play for. Yep. I'm with you 100%. Good stuff. And then at 1 o'clock, oh, this is interesting. Uh, the L.A. Rams travel to Minnesota to play the Vikings. You know what? Give me the Rams on the road, man. They they got that win over the Seahawks. They're going to try to keep the momentum high, but the, the Vikings are going to make it interesting at least. At least they're going to try. Yeah, I think so too. I, I, do, I also agree that the Rams are going to win this game, and, and I feel like they're starting to figure out their stride coming into the playoffs. Um, and of course, the big thing is, is that if if someday plays out like we like we're pre- potentially predicting, uh, maybe the Cardinals slack off a little bit, but the Rams get a W. That would put the Rams ahead in the division. So huge games again this weekend. I agree. I agree. And in this next one, speaking of big games, Buffalo traveling to. Gillette Stadium in New England to play the Patriots. Man, I would... You know what? New England admitted that they came out flat on a Saturday. was one of their better weeks. I think they rebound this week and get a big uh, a big win at home. Give me the Patriots on this one. Who you got? I'm going to pick the Bills. Okay. I know they haven't played. They've been up and down all season. Right. But I just don't see them allowing themselves as as highly touted as they were coming into the season. The expectation so high for this football team, the Buffalo Bills. I just don't see them allowing themselves to get swept by the Patriots since the Patriots won the first meeting. Yeah, they did. It'll it'll be interesting though. It'll be a very interesting game. Certainly one I'm gonna be keeping my eye on. Let's see, Tampa Bay and Carolina. Oh, Tampa Bay will win that easily. Tampa Bay for sure. They'll get their bounce back. They'll put some points on the board this time. Absolutely. Jacksonville and the Jets in New York. This is a tank bowl. Uh, You know what? Give me the Jets at home. Fuck it. Yeah, huge tank bowl. I agree. Uh, And I also picked the Jets as well. They almost got one out of Miami last week. I think they'll get one for sure out of Jacksonville. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Oh, the Lions and the Falcons playing in Atlanta. Look at Detroit with a whole lot of fight in them. You know what? Uh, it's Atlanta, though. Even though Atlanta's not the best. Hey, they just beat the fucking yeah. Cardinals, dude. Right, that's what I mean. They just beat the Vikings and the Cardinals. So, you know what? Let's go. Let's... Dude, the Lions are the best fucking team in the NFL now. I know, right? <laughs> Beating up the best, like literally the best team in the whole league. You know what? Give me Detroit. They should be tanking this, but I have a feeling Dan Campbell's crazy ass won't do it. Give me Detroit. I'm with it. I'm with it. I picked Detroit as well. This would totally screw up their tank, especially if Jacksonville loses. But, like, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm on the Detroit train, too. <laughs> this would be typical Detroit, man. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And then, of course, we have the L.A. Chargers. Going to Houston to play the Texans. Oh, the Chargers will probably skull drag. It might be skull drag of the week. Right there. Yeah, I think so too. Oh, very interesting match of the last one o'clock game on the slate. One you and I are going to watch. The Ravens and the Bengals. This is a huge game right here. Both both teams really need this. Baltimore. Both teams need this, and in yeah. my eyes, this game could very well end up deciding who wins the division. I was just thinking that, too. I think whoever wins this is going to take the whole thing. You know what? We we don't quite know who's going to be starting a quarterback for the Ravens, but honestly, after what I saw from Tyler, I don't think it matters. Give me the Ravens. Yeah, you know, yeah, I was going to say the same thing is that, like, we're not sure what Lamar Jackson's status is. We do know that he still has not practiced. Right. Um, so we don't know what's going on there. But, you know, based on every appearance that Tyler Huntley has had this season, not just last week against Green Bay, but, you know, he was he was the reason why the Ravens came back in that game against Cleveland a couple weeks ago, even though they couldn't get the win. And plus, and, and, and plus, he did get a win earlier. Season yeah, I was about Chicago. to. Yeah, I was about to say you. Uh, at, you actually were in Chicago when he got that win, so you've seen him play up close. Yeah, so he he's he's done some good things this season in the three games that he's played in. Um, so I, 
to a point where it almost doesn't really matter who's the quarterback. I think the question is going to be what what Bengals team are we going to get? Are they going to come out flat like they've been the past few weeks, or or are they going to be the team that that was opening eyes earlier in the year? Um, and you know the balls on their court for Cincinnati this game being in Cincinnati and the Ravens of course being beat up COVID or not they're just beat up all over the, the field at every position um, I like to think though that the Ravens are still going to come in and, and they're going to fight and as they always have um, and I think furthermore this game is also I, I think a sense of pride where I feel like the Ravens may not allow themselves to get swept by the Bengals this season. So I think the Ravens are going to win, too. Okay, so we both got the Ravens on that one. We'll go into the 4 o'clock games. We have the Bears traveling to Seattle to play the Seahawks. I'm going to take the Seahawks at home. Seattle, I'm with it. Absolutely. Bears are going to fall apart. Oh, this is going to be a big one right here. Pittsburgh travels to Kansas City to play the Chiefs. Give me the Chiefs at home, though. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. Give me the Chiefs, and hopefully it's not even close. All right, that's the thing I was thinking. Hopefully it's not a close one. Uh, Let's see, 4 o'clock. We have Denver uh, traveling to Las Vegas to play the Raiders. You know what? Give me the Raiders at home, man, in a black hole. Fuck it. Yeah, both teams come in at 7-7. I think potentially the biggest difference in this game is that you don't expect the Broncos to have Teddy Bridgewater. It'll be Drew Locke time. Um, and I lost faith in Drew Locke a long time ago. So yeah, same I'm going to pick the Raiders to win this game too. I feel the same way, man. Then, of course, 8.30 p.m. on NBC, a very critical uh, NFC matchup. Uh, the Washington football team travels to Dallas, play the Cowboys at Jerry's World. I am going to take the Cowboys at home this time, though. Of course, they beat them the first time in a very close game, but I think Washington is going to get their players back. But even so, the only difference this time is that, once again, they're going to make it close, and they're going to play Cal- Dallas tough, but in the end, uh, Dallas is going to pull away. Yeah, I think it'll be a close game, too. Especially because I feel like in the last few weeks, granted, they, they won decisively against the Giants last week, but I feel like the last few weeks, the Cowboys have kind of been playing down to their competition. Yes, they have. So, like, I wouldn't be surprised if this game's close, or even if Washington sneaks one out, but I think Dallas is going to win. Absolutely. I'm feeling the same way, man. And then Monday night, the Dolphins travel to New Orleans to play the Saints. You know what? I'm going to say this. Taysom Hill, as I said before, that boy is Tim Tebow 2.0, and that, that team's literally Alvin Kamara. Uh, Miami needs wins, but you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna take Miami on the road. This game's a tough one to predict for me. Yeah, it, it is tough. I feel like both teams are have been unpredictable all year long. Right. And, you know, like the Saints, like, they haven't always been great this year. Taysom Hill is not the best quarterback, and they've had their issues and problems, but their defense has been fantastic all year long, and their defense was the, this was the decisive element that had them beat the defending champions last week. Not only did they beat the defending champions, but I believe they swept the defending champions in the division. They did. You know, and they've had some other surprising wins this year, too. I believe the Saints beat Green Bay earlier this year. They um, did. Meanwhile, Miami, yeah, they're also 7-7. Seven seven. They beat a quality team or two this year like the Ravens, but they also barely squeaked by, had to come back and beat the Jets last week. Um, and that makes me a little bit concerned about what about uh, what they're able to do now, you know, moving ahead. Um and the Saints are riding high. You know what? I'm going to pick the Saints, actually. The Saints? All right. All right. It should be a good game, though. Absolutely. They, I'm glad they put it on a Monday night. That's going to be a very good game on a Monday night. I'll tell you what, though, man. It's certainly a very, very interesting slate of games. Let's see. Is there any is there any news that we should get to? Well, we already talked about Urban Meyer. 
Yeah, we did. Uh, I do know the Pro Bowl selections have been made. Uh, I guess just the kind of highlights who's been selected. Uh, of course, for the AFC, the quarterbacks, Lamar Jackson made it. Patrick Mahomes was selected. Justin Herbert was selected. Running backs, uh, Jonathan Taylor, Nick Chubb, Joe Mixon. <clears throat> Wide receivers, Tyreek Hill, Jamar Chase, Stephen D- Stephon Diggs, and Keenan Allen. Tight ends, Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey. Offensive tackles, Rashawn Slater for the Chargers. Orlando Brown for the Chiefs. Deion Doggins for the Bills. The guards are Quentin Nelson for the Colts. Uh, the, uh, let's see, the Browns, Joel Bonatino. Or, um, yeah, Bonatino. And Wyatt Teller for the Browns as well. Centers, of course, uh, Corey Lindsey and Ryan Kelly, Chargers and Colts. And, of course, the punter, uh, well, I'm sorry, the fullback is Patrick Ricard from the Ravens. Uh, for the defense, the starters, Miles Garrett, Max Crosby, Trey Hendrickson. Interior linemen, of course, DeForest Buckner, Chris Jones, Cameron Hayward. Outside linebacker, TJ Watt, Joey Bosa, Matt Judon. Inside linebackers, uh, let's see, Darius Leonard and Denzel Perryman. Cornerbacks, J.C. Jackson, Xavier Howard, Denzel, Watt, Denzel Ward, and Kenny Moore the second. One safety in Kevin uh, Bird. Strong safety, uh, Derwin James, Tyron Matthew. And then, of course, long snapper, Luke Rhodes, punter, A.J. Cole. And, of course, Justin Tucker. Is place kicker return specialness special is actually Devin Duvernay, funny enough. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Devin Duvernay got in as a returner. And another special teamer is Matthew Slater. And that is for the AFC. Now let's go to the NFC real quick. Let's see, that's AFC. Let's scroll down. I'm actually surprised that uh Duvernay got a slot in right there. That was pretty cool. Actually not, because I believe he leads the league in return yardage, or yards per return. Yeah. He led the league all year long. Yeah, he did. second. Yeah, they did, even though they had to slot in a Patriots person, of course. Yeah. Let's see. So here goes the NFC. <clears throat> so for the NFC, quarterbacks Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Kyler Murray, uh, running back Stephen Cook, James Conner, and Alvin Kamara. Wide receivers Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson, Debo Samuel. Tight ends George Kittle, Kyle Pitts. Offensive tackles Trent Williams, Tristan Wirfs, and Tyron Smith. Zach Martin, Brandon Sheriff, and Ali Marpet are the guards. Centers are Jason Kelsey and Ryan Jensen. Fullback Kyle Juszczyk for the 49ers. Defense. Nick Bosa, Brian Burns, Cameron Jordan, uh, interior lineman Aaron Donald, Jonathan Allen, Kenny Clark, uh, Chandler Jones, Quinn, uh, Robert Quinn, and Shaquille Barrett are the linebackers on the outside. Inside, Micah Parsons and Bobby Wagner. The corners, excuse me, are Trayvon Diggs, Jalen Ramsey, Darius Slay, and Marshawn Lattimore. Safety is Keandre Diggs for the Seattle Seahawks. Strong safety, Buda Baker uh, for the Cardinals. And, uh, of course, Harrison Smith for the Vikings. Long snapper, Josh Smith for the Falcons. Uh, punter, Brian Anger. Place kicker, Matt Gay from the Rams. Uh, Jaquim Grant is return specialist. And JT Gray is special teamer. So those are the Pro Bowl rosters. Other than that, no other real news to report. We did talk about Le'Veon Bell getting signed and everything else. Uh, looks like we are all good on news. But yeah, folks, uh, we're pretty much getting down to it now. This is essentially like we're we're in, what, week 16. So really we have this week and then two more weeks after. So season's winding down fast, folks. Make sure you get in on the playoff race. Uh, make sure you also follow all of our picks as well if you want to do any gambling. Certainly on the picks that uh, B Money and I are split on, those are ones you definitely want to look into. But uh, usually these are picks that we make based on who we believe will win. So definitely happy betting to all the degenerates out there. Is there anything you want to close with before we get out? Uh, Merry Christmas to all the viewers. 
and enjoy a good weekend of football. No doubt. Merry Christmas, everyone. Hope you all enjoy it. And hey, at least we get some football on this Christmas day. So I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I know you are, Be Money. And I know everybody at home is looking forward to it as well. So folks, thank you all so much. Enjoy your holiday. Be Money. See you next week as always, I'm sure. Yes, sir. Good stuff. I'll see you next week. Cover all the madness. And folks, I will see you next week alongside them. Until then, we are gone.